a Philadelphia sports fan myself, there is no denying that this city has some of the most passionate fans when it comes to the big four of professional sports. We've had our highs. Two Phillies World Series wins, the Broad Street Bullies winning back-to-back -back cups in the 70s, the Sixers now on the up and up after struggling through the process, and of course, the Eagles finally winning the Super Bowl by beating Tom Brady and the Patriots. Through all the highs, however, there have been some real lows that we've had to endure, especially some events that were directly caused by the fans themselves. These specific actions have given our city the reputation that all Philly sports fans now have to live with for the rest of their lives. Let's take a look at some of the worst Philadelphia sports fan moments in history in no particular order. Number 1. Eagles fans throwing snowballs at Santa One of the more infamous events in Philadelphia sports fan history is the pelting of good old Saint Nick, no, not Nick Foles, the other Saint Nick, yeah that one, with snowballs during an Eagles game in 1968. After starting the season 0-11, the Eagles pulled together two straight wins in a row, however, this was not to the delight of Eagles fans as it was ruining their chances at achieving the number one overall pick in the draft that season, which would end up being six-time Pro Bowler OJ Simpson. Due to the inclement weather during this winter afternoon game, there was supposed to be an appearance from Santa Claus during the game at halftime, but the guy the team had hired had never showed up due to the weather. A legend was soon born as Frank Olivio, a fan who was already dressed up as Santa was asked to fill in. Now just imagine a 50,000 plus ticked off Eagles fans upset with both the weather and the team. Booze rained down from the stands as well as snowballs as Santa Frank was immediately rushed out of the stadium. At least he had a sense of humor by telling one fan that he would be receiving coal in his stockings for Christmas. And now you can always expect at least one NFL announcer over the course of a season to mention this event at least once during an Eagles game during the holidays. Number two, a fan jumps into the penalty box with Ty Domi. In the early 2000s, the Philadelphia Flyers and Toronto Maple Leafs were two of the better teams in the NHL, but were also two of the most feared teams. The Flyers obviously had their plethora of enforcers and goons, but the Maple Leafs had one of the more famous of them all. Ty Domi. With the game tied early in the third period, Luke Richardson had hit Darcy Tucker into the boards, which then caused retaliation from Domi. Unfortunately, Domi ended up getting an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty and off to the box he went, where the madness soon began. Fans began to chirp and throw trash and beer at Domi from the stands, but Domi returned the favor by squirting water at the fans from the box. One fan took exception to this and broke the glass separating the fans from the penalty box and started to brawl with Domi inside the box. Domi got the upper hand of the confrontation as the fan left bloodied and had to get stitches. I guess you could say that the inner Broad Street bully of all Philadelphia Flyers fans are still alive and well to this day. Number 3. Booing Donovan McNabb on Draft Day After finishing the 1998 season with a 3-11 record, the Philadelphia Eagles held the second overall pick in the 1999 NFL Draft. With then new head coach Andy Reid ready to take over the team the following season, the Eagles were still looking for one player to become their franchise quarterback. However, with the Cleveland Browns selecting Tim Couch with the first pick in that draft, and despite needing a quarterback, there was no way the Eagles would pass up on a potential franchise running back in Ricky Williams, right? To the shock of many, the Eagles ended up selecting quarterback Donovan McNabb out of Syracuse with the second overall pick. Eagles fans in attendance at the draft in Madison Square Garden filled the arena with boos. Only Philly fans would boo a player being selected second in a draft. Although Donovan McNabb had broke and set multiple records at QB with the organization, many Philly fans still to this day have a love-hate relationship for him. He seemed to never be able to win the big game, due in part to bad coaching, However, you can't deny that McNabb had a fairly successful career here in Philly. Number 4. Eagles fans cheering the Michael Irvin injury It didn't take long for the reputation of Philadelphia Eagles fans to make national news once again. This time, however, the boos changed to cheers, but for the wrong reason. The Eagles-Cowboys rivalry was brought to new lows in October of 1999 when star Cowboys wide receiver Michael Irvin caught a pass from then-Dallas QB Troy Aikman and was hit with a tackle on the back of his neck and landed head first into the ground. Irvin lay motionless on the field for several minutes before eventually being stretchered out of Veterans Stadium. All the while, Eagles fans were cheering this situation. 
This would end up being Michael Irvin's last professional football game ever as he was forced to retire due to this injury to his spinal cord. No matter what the situation may be, severe or not, and no matter how much of a killer he was to our team, cheering an injury is something that should always be frowned upon. Number five, Philly's fan throws up on a police officer and his daughter. This moment is just downright messed up. In a 2010 matchup between the Philadelphia Phillies and Washington Nationals, two drunk 21-year-olds made the local news because of their actions during this game. The two men were using profane language and supposedly spitting throughout the game with these projectiles landing on some fans. One such fan happened to be the daughter of an off-duty police officer. The cop had complained to Philly security of these two men and one was ejected from the ballpark. While only one of the men were ejected, the other decided the best way to combat the situation was to force himself to throw up on the off-duty police officer and his family. This story hit all the local and national news outlets as the man was later arrested and pled guilty to simple assault, harassment, and disorderly conduct. Before we jump into the final event I wanted to discuss for this video, here are some honorable or I guess you could say dishonorable mentions. Eagles fans eating poop and punching horses after winning the NFC Championship slash Super Bowl. Fans throwing batteries at quarterback and now current head coach Doug Peterson. She said no chance by Flyers fans to Patrick Kane after the alleged rape accusations. And a stink bomb thrown on the ice during a Flyers-Devils game. And the final event for this video, the Flyers bracelets incident. With hockey being my favorite sport, this event is going to sting for a while. During Game 3 of Round 1 of the 2016 NHL playoffs, the Flyers and Washington Capitals were set to face off with the Flyers hoping to get back into the series after dropping the first two games in DC. Before the game, there was a moment of silence and remembrance for owner and founder Ed Snyder who had unfortunately passed away the week prior. All those who attended this game were given special wristbands that would light up for a presentation to remember Snyder. Although the Flyers were the first to score in this game, it soon turned ugly when the Caps would score four unanswered to take a 4-1 lead. Flyers forward pierre Edward Belmar then laid a nasty boarding or checking from behind penalty onto defenseman Dmitry Orlov which resulted in a five minute major in game misconduct. With the fans already frustrated with the results of the game and the officiating, they then began to throw these bracelets onto the ice and at Caps players. The players, both Caps and Flyers, begged them to stop. The public address announcer begged them to stop. They didn't. The Flyers actually ended up receiving a delay of game penalty as a result of this behavior. The Flyers ended up losing the series in six games, but on a night where their beloved owner was meant to be the focal point of remembrance, it soon became overshadowed by another infamous act in Philly fan sports history. We've done some pretty dumb, stupid, and downright unforgivable things as fans in this city. This reputation will stick with us until the end of time. However, just remember that not all Philly fans are like this. We are just as passionate as any other fan base. We're not afraid to show our displeasure or appreciation for those that have played for the teams in our city. Every fan base has those people that are going to do stupid things. We just have to ignore them the best we can and show why our cities have the best fans in the world. But hey, all in all, I'm from Philly. No one likes us, and we don't care. So thank you guys for watching this video. If you did enjoy, make sure to smash that like button down below. Subscribe if you are brand new to the channel. Also, feel free to suggest any kinds of videos you guys would like to see for specific events or actions that you guys would feel are appropriate. Other than that, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace. Thank you.